I'm WSA 9 Weather Watch Meteorologist Topper Shutt. We are tracking Ian and good news for folks in Tampa. The storm's taken a little bit of a jog to the right or to the south. So here we go uh, tonight at midnight category three. And then by the time we get to say noon on Wednesday, so tomorrow Wednesday category four and notice it's far south of Tampa. Um, so it's now headed for Fort Myers, Fort Myers and uh, that area. So Longboat Key is here, Tampa's there. So that's good news. That's going to keep the highest winds and the biggest storm surge south of Tampa. Super bad news, though, for like Coral Beach and for uh, Fort Myers. So that's in the afternoon. That's noon on Wednesday. Moves ashore uh, even by midnight Thursday. So late Wednesday night, still a category, probably category three at this point. Winds 130 by 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Then it goes to a one break quickly. And that's 630 in the morning on Wednesday, uh, Thursday rather. 1230 on Thursday, still a cat one moving into uh, the peninsula of Florida and then headed toward Gainesville and then Jacksonville. And then we after that, it moves off to the north, uh, curves back, may just get off the coast briefly of uh, Georgia and then come back into upstate uh, Carolina. That's by Saturday, 10 o'clock. So, uh, you know, by that time, we're looking at rain and showers here by the time we get into, say, Saturday morning from the remnants of Ian. OK. So it is a cat three uh, cat four right now at 130. Excuse me, cat three right now at 120. Supposed to be a cat four 130 uh, tomorrow or late tonight. And that would be our this is our second major hurricane of the uh, season. Now in the past hurricane Tampa Bay hurricane 1921 started a similar position and then it took a turn. Look at that south of Tampa. Tampa, to my knowledge, has never been hit directly by a hurricane. Uh, so it went that way and then stayed offshore. So this track is going to be similar to this, maybe a little further north, but kind of similar. Now that said, this storm still did a lot of damage to Cortez and Sarasota. They had heavy structural damage, so it's not great. It's not, you know, they're not going to escape everything, but at least the good news is with a track like that and a track like what we think Ian's going to take, the highest winds will remain south of Tampa Bay. That is good. OK, so what about Storm surge. Now the storm surge, as you might expect, has been a little further south because the models are changing the uh, their tune a bit. Now this red is the European model. Yellow is the American model. They're pretty much in lockstep on Wednesday. And then by the time we get to say Thursday, they're still pretty close. And then by Friday, this is a little slower. The American model is a little slower. The European model extends it and races it off the coast of Jacksonville. And then both of them bring it back in to inland Georgia as we get into Saturday and the weekend and it kind of just died out by late Saturday night. OK, so in terms of retired names, this is kind of interesting. Will Ian be retired? Could be uh, a lot of eyes have been retired 13. Now, some of them ring a bell for us uh, like Isabel that went to our west and produced a ton of tornadoes in the metro area at 2003. Uh, I re remember Irene. And so we'll see if Ian will be added to that list. It's the most common name retired, which is kind of odd. OK, so no real surprise here. We have yellow. That's tropical storm warnings. We have red. That is hurricane warnings, and they're in effect for essentially almost all of Florida. Now, here is the storm surge forecast. The red here is 8 to 12. And notice, you know, if you were with us yesterday, the 8 to 12 is at Tampa. So they've moved it down closer to the landfall of the storm, which makes perfect sense. So still four to six feet, three to five feet in Tampa uh, and six to nine feet uh, south uh, of, uh, say, Fort Myers, just south of Fort Myers. OK, so Ian is still headed generally toward Tampa, but now the updated track is now south of Tampa. When will the highest winds be in Tampa and the, and the largest storm surge? We're going to say 2 p.m. now to 7 a.m. on Thursday. Looking a little bit earlier on, on Wednesday. Now for us, for the DMV, yeah, Ian's going to send us some rain and showers. We'll say one to two inches. Yes, it's going to be for the weekend. Yes, it's our first weekend in October. I know you want to go pick pumpkins. May not be the best weekend to do that. So battle of the models again for us. Rainfall. GFS says not very much, one to two inches. European says, hang on, hang on. It's going to be heavy rain even west of town, even toward I-81, three, four, five inches of rain. OK, so we're going to watch that carefully. In either scenario right now, we do not expect any severe weather because the storm is going to pass uh, to our south and to our east. So this is 1 a.m. Saturday. Now, this is the European model, quiet. 
by the time we get to Monday at 1 o'clock, only has, you know, less than an inch in D.C., higher amounts out to the west of us. And we get into Tuesday and all of a sudden, boom, two, three inches, an inch downtown. So the European model has more rain here and most of it falling actually Monday into Tuesday morning. Okay. GFS, American model, 1230 Saturday afternoon, nothing really. Uh, by 1230 Monday, not that much, less than an inch, it's in green, but you know, three inches down toward Patuxent River. Still could be some big time rains south of Fredericksburg and into extreme southern Calvert and southern St. Mary's County. But again, it is the battle of the models for us. GFS has very little rain. Europeans has a lot of rain with some possible flooding. We'll keep a close eye on that. Again, the remnants of Ian make it into the DMV over the weekend.